Ladies and gentlemen, Tommy's Matchbook was released into Destiny 2 as the Season Pass exotic back in Season of the Worthy. This was one of the first guns that I reviewed on this channel. I took a quick preliminary look at the gun, figured I'd get back to it once I spent a little more time with it, and 10 months later, here we are again. In Beyond Light, Tommy's Matchbook saw no changes to its weapon archetype, but a whole lot has changed around Tommy's, which made me curious to see how it's holding up these days. Plus, a handful of people have been asking me about Tommy's Matchbook, and I really can't blame them. If I were a new player, or even a lapsed player, and I was standing at that weapon kiosk in the tower with an exotic cipher in my pocket, I'd probably want to know what that sweet looking Tommy gun was all about too. So in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into Tommy's Matchbook, and really put it through its paces in both PvP and PvE. And hopefully by the end of the video, we'll see if it's still worth equipping here in Beyond Light. But if at any point during the course of this video you find it useful, helpful, or enjoyable, please remember to leave it a like. And if you're really digging the content and you'd like to catch more Destiny 2 videos made by yours truly, consider subscribing to the Ironworker Gaming Channel. But let's get into the review with a look at Tommy's Matchbook stats and perks. Tommy's Matchbook is an exotic solar auto rifle shooting at 720 rounds per minute with 100 rounds in the magazine. For the stats, we'll pull in some solid numbers from Destiny Tracker. When compared to other 720 RPM auto rifles, the range stat at 58 is pretty solid. The stability is average, while the handling stat is pretty decent. But that reload stat at 10, as you probably guessed, is really bad. We do have an aim assist value of 81 though, which is very strong when compared to the rest of the weapon class. The recoil direction is listed at a 64, but for this weapon, I'm gonna suggest that we don't read too much into that. The intrinsic trait is Ignition Trigger, stating that sustained fire with this weapon overheats it, increasing the damage, but burning the user. The exotic perk on Tommy's is Heat Sink. Overheat damage is reduced when not aiming down sights. And this is referring to the self damage that you're going to take, not your damage output. There is an exotic catalyst for Tommy's, stating that when Ignition Trigger is active, your health will recover much faster. And this exotic catalyst does exactly what it says it does, but probably not what you think it should do. I'll explain coming up here as we move into PvE to explore some damage, functionality, and performance. Alright, as always, we'll take a look at this weapon's functionality first. As we hold down the trigger and the weapon begins to fire, once 20 rounds have left the magazine, Tommy's matchbook will overheat. This is going to hold true whether you're firing from the hip or aiming down sights. This is the point where your weapon damage is going to increase, but you will also start taking self damage. As you continue to hold down the trigger, the self damage will strip the shield off your guardian, but it will not dig into your red health bar. If you are aiming down sights, your shield will be knocked off at a more rapid rate. Once you fire between, it looks like 50 to 55 rounds, your shield will be completely depleted. Firing from the hip does alleviate this a little bit, since your shield will deteriorate more slowly. Here you're looking at firing 70 to 75 rounds before that shield is completely gone. Now with that catalyst, it states that your health will recover much faster when ignition trigger is activated. Not your shield, your health. The red health bar. So basically what this does for you is it allows you to keep firing and boost your survivability once your guardian is critically wounded. Your health will regenerate almost immediately when you get a break from taking any damage. But you do have to continually lay on the trigger. Alright, for the damage, I'm going to establish a baseline with the Arctic Haze Rapid Fire Auto Rifle. It's hitting for 658 points of damage on a crit versus Carl, and 439 points of damage to the body. And we can see Tommy's Matchbook hitting for the exact same damage values. This is not really a surprise, but with exotics, I do like to double check, just to make sure. But once Ignition Trigger kicks in, Tommy starts registering 1,305 points of damage on a crit, and 870 points of damage to the body. This is essentially doubling the weapon's damage output. But this is of course at the cost of taking self damage. But theoretically speaking, if you were to bury a full 100 round magazine in the Carl's face, you're looking at 117,560 points of damage, which is a lot of damage coming from a primary weapon. Performance wise, in baseline content, Tommy's matchbook is gonna rip through just about everything. We're looking at a 100 round magazine with a 100% damage increase. So once Ignition Trigger kicks in, trash ads are going to die almost immediately, and major targets will melt down really stinking fast. And for boss damage, while it may not be the best option that you're carrying, if this is all you got left, it does a really nice job here also. 
And since we are talking about baseline content, most enemies aren't hitting hard enough to make that self-damage become a serious factor. Especially if you're playing on a Warlock where you can drop a healing rift and keep your health pretty much topped off as you're firing the weapon. And in baseline content is where you're going to see the biggest benefit from the Catalyst. When your Guardian goes critical, your health is going to keep getting pushed back up as you lay on the trigger, unless of course you're taking a steady stream of damage, such as an Ogre Eye Blast. And while I do like to keep my reviews class neutral for the most part, Actium War Rig, the Titan Exotic Chess Piece, pairs very nicely with Tommy's Matchbook, since it's constantly loading rounds back into the magazine, really boosting the weapon's uptime. And a nice mod that you could make use of with Tommy's Matchbook is Protective Light. It does require you to work within the Charge with Light system, but it gives you significant damage resistance against combatants when your shield is destroyed. I'm not sure on the exact damage resistance percentage, but what this is going to do is it will consume all of the stacks of Charge with Light that you have built up and give you a 5 second damage resistance timer for each one. And it does seem to significantly reduce that incoming damage. Keep in mind though this is only going to work in PvE and it will cost you a little bit of strength. But with Tommies, you're pretty much going to be living in the red, so it does do a nice job of keeping you alive. And when you start taking a look at mid-level content, I think you're going to be just fine with Tommies. You're probably going to want to take a look at subclasses and exotic armor pieces to boost your survivability. But I think all in all, if you play into it, it can be a serviceable weapon. But as we move into higher level content, we really start to see some flaws pop up. I mean, it does have a catalyst and it can generate orbs of light, so that is a definite plus. But this is predominantly a close range weapon, and in more difficult content, the opportunity for close range gameplay presents itself less. Also, the reload speed is quite slow, and while the magazine size is massive, you do need to make sure you don't get caught in a bad spot when that magazine empties out. Next, Tommy's matchbook is going to burn through all of your bullets in reserves really fast. In this case, I generally would suggest putting on an auto rifle reserves mod, but it's only allowing you to carry 74 more bullets than you can at base. So whether that's worth it or not is up to you. And the higher up the ladder you go as far as content difficulty, the more of a factor that self damage becomes. With enemies hitting harder and tanking more shots, you're not going to be at full health all that often with Tommies in your hand. And this is going to leave you open to get one shot from a lot of different sources. And in endgame content, this can be a tough sacrifice to make for having high close range damage. But with that, let's head into the Crucible and see how Tommy's is faring in there. Starting out with our damage numbers, Tommy's matchbook is hitting for 21 points of damage on a crit and 14 points of damage to the body, at base of course. This puts our optimal time to kill at 0.77 seconds requiring 9 crits and 1 body shot, and the body shot time to kill comes in at 1.17 seconds with 15 shots landed. Now when we have ignition trigger proc, your crit damage will jump to 31 and your body shot will be hitting for 21 points of damage. This is dropping the optimal time to kill down to 0.5 seconds with 6 crits and 1 body shot, and the body shot time to kill is going to dip down to 0.77 seconds with 10 shots landed. And if that's not good enough for you, throw in a 20% damage buff. You'll bring the crit damage to 37 and the body shot damage to 25. This will move the optimal time to kill down to 0.42 seconds with 5 crits and 1 body shot. And the body shot time to kill is going to come in at 0.58 seconds with 8 shots landed. And just in case you were wondering, at base with a 20% damage buff, a crit's going to hit for 25 and a body shot is going to hit for 17. That's going to put the optimal time to kill at 0.58 seconds with 8 crits, and the body shot time to kill will come in at 0.92 seconds with 12 shots landed. Also, if you do have Ignition Trigger activated, you can down most Guardians in their roaming super in 1 second flat if you're landing all crits. But how about that physical range? We're going to be hitting for full damage from 26 meters in. Stepping back past that, we do start to see the damage fall off. So, performance. Just at base, the time to kills are very solid. Pre-Beyond Light, Rapid Fire Auto Rifles were bested by Adaptive Auto Rifles, but since they were nerfed, the 720 RPM Autos have the fastest time to kill in the weapon class. But when you start figuring in Ignition Trigger and stacking that with external damage buffs, those time to kills get really, really low. Plus we have a 100 round magazine, so you can keep that damage flowing for quite a long time. And here again, even longer if you're a Titan with Actium War Rig. Also, the hipfire accuracy is insanely good. If you look at the reticle as this weapon fires, it barely moves. 
You can see with Arctic Haze, as the weapon fires, that circle blooms out a good bit. With Tommy's, pretty much nothing is moving. Which leads me to believe that we are looking at some sort of hidden hipfire grip intrinsic ability. Which I mean is fantastic because this weapon is begging to be fired from the hip, since you're going to take less self damage when the burn kicks in. Next, the in-air accuracy also seems to be extremely good, but I'm not 100% sure what's going on with it. Watch here with Arctic Haze. When our Guardian leaves the ground, that circle blooms out quite a bit. When we leave the ground with Tommy's matchbook, that circle does not move, but the crosshairs pinch in. Okay, the running theory amongst the leading Destiny 2 community sandbox gurus is that the circle is the accuracy cone and the crosshairs represent the aim assist cone when you're dealing with an auto rifle. And since aim assist is extremely hard to test in game, I'm going to go with it. I trust that these guys know what they're talking about. So if this holds true, your in-air aim assist diminishes, but your weapon is still deadly accurate when airborne. Speaking of aim assist though, Tommy's is carrying an aim assist value of 81, which is very strong for an auto rifle. This adds a good bit of bullet magnetism from rounds fired, as well as increased reticle stickiness if you're playing with a controller. We also have a respectable handling stat, so this can serve as a pretty decent swap to weapon for cleaning up kills. And here again, just like in PvE, look at exotic armor pieces and synergy with subclasses to boost your survivability. While this isn't going to completely negate the effect of the self damage that you're going to take when wielding this weapon, it can help out a great deal. For example, me, if I put on Bottom Tree Voidwalker with the Devourer perk, I'm getting health back after every kill when Devourer is proc Take a look at your preferred class and subclass and see what you can do with it. Drawbacks though, this gun does want to be fired from the hip, and that's not to say you can't or shouldn't aim down sights in certain scenarios, but it definitely does seem to perform best when firing from the hip, which does have its benefits. You do maintain a wider field of view, you can swing your gun around a little bit faster, and you're not spending any time pulling that gun up to your cheek before you start firing. Me personally though, I have trained my brain in first person shooters over the last 20 years to aim down sights for the win. This is a tough habit for me to break and I feel like I am far less precise when shooting from the hip. But this is personal preference. You decide for yourself if this is a pro or a con. Next, Tommy's matchbook is what I would consider a gambler's weapon. Yes, you are getting roughly a 48% damage increase with ignition trigger, really lowering your time to kill. But since you're taking self damage, you're inherently improving your opponent's time to kill versus you. So when you push your chips into the center of the table and say, I can down you before you can down me, you had better land your shots. The biggest problem though can come post engagement, since you've probably taken some damage walking out of the initial gunfight. And especially in 6v6 game modes, it seems like there is often another enemy guardian right around the corner. So right off the bat, you may find yourself at a disadvantage in the next gunfight. But not only that, you might be susceptible to getting one shot from across the way, from any weapon carrying a respectable amount of range. So you kind of got to pick your engagements wisely and really watch your positioning. And last point, 26 meters is not a great physical range currently. You have stasis on the field constantly, and even after the Shatter Dive nerfs, which evidently didn't actually nerf it, it's an imminent threat. So if the plan is to get in tight and play aggressively, make sure you know what you're walking into. That and 26 meters doesn't leave you a whole lot of room for error. You get in a little too tight and you're leaving yourself open to shotgunners. You play back a little too far, like around 30 meters, and hand cannons and high impact pulse rifles can have a field day with you. So you really gotta work hard to keep in that sweet spot as far as range is concerned. Too far you're at a disadvantage, too tight you're at a disadvantage. It really is a thin line to toe. Alright, this has already been a very long video, so I'm gonna wrap it up quick here. Thoughts. In PvE. Baseline content, this gun will rip through enemies extremely fast. Great weapon. In mid-tier content, as long as you're willing to look for armor and subclass synergy with this weapon, I think it can serve you well. But in high-end content, given the weapon's limited range, I really do think there are better options out there. In PvP, I love this gun as much as I hate it. The damage numbers that you can hit and the time to kill values that you can achieve are extremely impressive. The gun feels fluid, the gun feels accurate, and I feel, all in all, it is satisfying to use. I do struggle with the fact that it predominantly asks for hipfire gameplay though. It's kinda just not my thing. And I also have a very tough time getting any sort of momentum in a Crucible match with that ever-present self-damage. I'm sure there are people out there who can really excel with this gun, but I personally am not one of those players. 
So if you were someone who's thinking about purchasing Tommy's matchbook, or just someone who wanted a refresher course, I really hope this review helped. And if it did, please remember to leave it a like, and consider subscribing to the Ironworker Gaming channel to catch more Destiny 2 content presented by yours truly. If you'd like to catch me live one of these days, I will be streaming right here on YouTube. And to contact me, you can look for Ironworker814 on Twitter, join our channel Discord, link will be in the description, or leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. And with all that being said, I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to check out this weapon review. You guys are awesome, and I will catch you on the next one.